you've come a long way and learned a lot about the new technology of achievement. Now it's time to stimulate the achiever within you, to utilize all the ideas and techniques that you've learned to create entirely new possibilities for your life. I'll show you how to create and maintain a solid, positive mental attitude. You'll learn to integrate into yourself the same qualities that top achievers have, to see you through the tough times that all successful achievers weather. Also, I'll share with you the keys to peak performance, so you can do what you want with your life, taking yourself from where you are to where you want to be. Most of us think we know the importance of a positive mental attitude, an attitude of mental toughness to get us through the hard times. Most of us will never have it put to the test the way NLP comprehensive trainer Gary Ferris did a few years ago. Gary was jogging after an NLP seminar in Santa Cruz, California. At 38, he was training to compete in the master's category for a quarter mile run. That day, he decided to jog down a paved farm road, artichoke fields on either side. A pickup truck came busting down that road at over 60 miles an hour. The driver braked, but he was still going very fast when his truck crashed into Gary, throwing him dozens of yards into an artichoke field. At first, the emergency room doctors weren't sure he was going to make it. They performed the first two of six operations Gary would eventually have. He managed to stay alive. The doctor said the only reason that he had made it was that he was in such good physical condition. They also told him he'd never walk normally and certainly could never jog or run again. For the next two years, Gary was in sports rehabilitation. He rebuilt his body, overcoming pain and the doubts of his doctors. Today, Gary runs regularly and is undoubtedly the most physically fit trainer for NLP Comprehensive. What happened to cause such a turnaround? Bernie Siegel, the author of Love, Medicine, and Miracles, would point out that the doctors were just using statistical evidence available. They didn't know Gary Ferris was an exceptional patient. Gary is someone who used NLP to overcome a life-threatening injury. We've already shown you how NLP studies the superachievers in the world how we find the qualities that make these people's accomplishments possible, and then how we teach those same qualities to others. Well, Gary used the same principles in rebuilding his body. Right after the accident, Gary began studying sports injury rehabilitation. He searched for the core characteristics of those athletes who'd gone through successful rehabilitation. He examined their mental attitude. He found six mental patterns that characterized all of these people. While these six characteristics were discovered studying rehabilitating athletes, we soon found they were the six core characteristics of any positive mental attitude. Whether we looked at athletes, entrepreneurs, or executives, the more confident their positive mental attitude, the more they utilize these six elements. So what are the six elements of a positive mental attitude? First, these successful athletes were using both their motivating directions. They were both moving toward goals and away from consequences. This means they were using their maximum motivation. They knew where they were going. Take the high school swimmer coming back from an injury. She not only wanted to regain her health, she also wanted to win a college scholarship. She was motivated and directed. She was moving toward her goal. While a 42-year-old man was working out and rehabilitating to keep an arthritic condition from getting worse, his motivation is to get away from a possible consequence. In this case, the possible effects of a debilitating disease. The second thing Gary noticed about these athletes in rehab was a value they all held in common. Put simply, these athletes were dedicated to regaining full strength and health. This became their guiding goal, their final standard. Their attitude, anything less is unacceptable. In fact, for many of them, they not only wanted their full strength and health, they wanted even more. They wanted to be in better shape than they were before their injuries. They knew what they were capable of and wouldn't accept anything less. These athletes knew they would succeed. The third key element they had in common was the ability to determine what we call the chunk size of information they took in. That basically means they approached rehabilitation one step at a time. If you think of overcoming a terrible injury, it's intimidating to think of the entire task all at once. If you take it in chunks or individual steps, you'll complete it. 
Each step becomes a new goal. For Gary Ferris, he had to survive before he could walk. He had to walk before he could run. Gary and the other athletes he studied got great satisfaction from completing each of these steps. They experienced succeeding at milestones on the way to their major goal of full strength and health. The fourth key element found is how the athlete thinks about time. When concentrating on small chunks and daily activities, the succeeding athlete needs to be in the present. That's because they need to be thinking about the single task they're doing right now. Athletes and everyone else can get distracted and discouraged by thinking about the future. For example, if they project ahead doubtfully, asking questions like, will I be able to reach my previous capabilities? Or will I succeed? They may have problems. These questions can create a negative orientation. Better to ask, what can I do now to reach my next milestone? There are some cases where a future orientation is very beneficial. If you're in rehabilitation and you're going through some very painful exercises, it's helpful to think ahead to the rewards all this work and pain will give you. While you're visualizing a healthier body and an increased range of motion, your mind is also distracted from the pain. The fifth element of successful rehabilitation and a positive mental attitude is involvement. The more the athlete helps himself, the better his recovery even if it's something as simple as placing ice on an inflamed area. When you participate, you can influence what's going on. It increases your personal intensity. It makes you more determined and more aggressive. It's been discovered among hospital patients that the more they participate in their recovery, the more likely they are to recover. The sixth and final key element for successful rehabilitation and building a solid, positive mental attitude is how you judge your performance what mental comparisons you make. This is one of those things that applies to all aspects of life. People often compare themselves and their actions to others. Early in life, we notice in school that some kids are smarter, some are better looking or more popular. One way people evaluate their progress is by making comparisons to other people. If they come out on top, they feel good. But if they don't compare favorably, they often feel inadequate. The tendency for us to do this is very strong. By the time we're adults, comparisons are made often and mostly unconsciously. It is very important for the recovering athlete not to fall into this mental habit. Because of their injury, they'd compare poorly. It can be discouraging. Gary found successful ones look solely at their own progress. They make a self-to-self -self comparison. They ask themselves questions like, how far have I progressed since last week? In the last month? All of us can do this. We can measure our own progress at work and at home. This is one of the greatest gifts parents can give their children. Teach your kids to make self-to-self -self comparisons, to measure their own progress. Let them know that there are always people in the world better than us at some things and worse at others. What's important is our own progress. When we have this attitude, we look at other people's accomplishments for inspiration, models of excellence, or sources of information, not targets of envy. We can delight in the success of others and truly value our own success. So these are the six key elements. Inner motivation, valuing full health, taking in chunk size information, a present moment time frame, involvement, and self-to-self -self comparisons. Together, they create a mental compulsion to succeed despite statistical evidence. With these six elements, a positive mental attitude is assured. Without them, rehabilitation can be very difficult. For example, let's look at a 31-year-old man who hurt himself seriously while playing softball. As soon as he started rehabilitation, his first question was, when will this be finished so I can get back to my job? His question speaks volumes about his mental patterns and emotional makeup. His only thought is of returning to work, a good goal in itself, but it doesn't say whether he'll be limping or healthy. And it's a very big goal, a big chunk. Remember the idea of small chunks. This man wants to move quickly, but he doesn't have any plan. He's in for a lot of frustration if he doesn't take one step at a time. After the big picture, he needs to concentrate on each detail of his recovery. 
and his involvement isn't there. He's passive. When will you be finished, he asks. He wants his physical therapist to do it for him. He doesn't realize he needs to take an active role. If he doesn't change these attitudes, he can depend on his rehabilitation being unproductive. Contrast this with one of America's great athletes and achievers, Greg LeMond. LeMond is the two-time winner of the most grueling bicycle race in the world, Le Tour de France. What's even more amazing is the second time he won the race, he was competing with shotgun pellets around his heart. After winning the first time, he'd been the victim of a freak hunting accident. Some thought he might be permanently disabled. They were certain he would never compete again. But Greg LeMond had such a solid, positive mental attitude that he felt compelled to do all those things that great athletes need to do to regain full strength and health. And Greg LeMond did regain his strength and health, and more. His final stretch down the streets of Paris was the fastest ever in the history of the race. Greg LeMond is a great achiever and winner. You can do the same thing in your life. You can face problems and troubles in your own life by using the same mental strategies many great athletes do. You can use the six elements of a solid, positive mental attitude, and they'll work. Here's a great case in point. The man's name is Maury Magus, and he's a Chicago folk hero. Years ago on Maxwell Street, a kind of open-air flea market, Maury used to sell shirts out of the trunk of his car. He went from that to selling athletic equipment. And in a few years, he had plied his salesmanship and deal-making skills into one of the largest retail sports stores in Chicago. And then he lost it all and was back on Maxwell Street, once again selling out of the trunk of his car. Like those great athletes coming back from injuries, Maury Mages also came back. Today, his superstore, MC Sporting Goods, is the biggest and most famous retail sports store in Chicago. A warm, open man with a big voice and an even bigger heart, you wouldn't guess the past hardships or hard times. But that's the way it is with people whose attitude isn't just there for the hard times. It's there for all times. And that's the kind of attitude that will help you throughout your life. I'm going to show you how to attain that, how to incorporate the positive mental attitude of a Maury Mages, a Greg Lamont, a Gary Ferris, how to overcome problems and enrich your life how to use those six elements great athletes use in regaining their bodies and their careers. And then I'm going to show you how you can spread that change throughout your memories of the past and your expectations of the future. You're going to learn to change your life using NLP timeline techniques taken from the Andreas's book, Heart of the Mind. You'll need to put aside a few minutes to do this exercise. I'm going to guide you to discover how you code your past and your future. I'm going to lead you to discover your personal timeline. First, take a moment to clear your mind. Begin by thinking of something you do regularly, like brushing your teeth or reading the Sunday newspaper. This something needs to be relatively neutral, something you don't have strong feelings about either way. When you have something in mind, think of when you did it two months ago. Six months ago. A year ago. Three years ago. And ten years ago. Think of each one all at once now. Notice how they arrange themselves when you think of all five at once. For many people, they'll form a line with the most recent memories closest and the more distant memories farther away. For some people, this line extends off to their left. For others, it goes behind them and they have to pull it around to see the past. Whatever way you do it is good because that's the way your brain has found to code time for you. NLP research has shown that people have some kind of internal order to their experience. You can hear it in a person's language when they say something like, put that behind you and look forward to the future. 
And where is your future? This time we'll do much the same exercise as before, except now you'll find events you expect in the future. Again, take something you do regularly and expect to do in the future. First, two months ahead. Then six months ahead. Then one year. Then three years. Then ten years. Now think of them all at once and find out how they are arranged to form your future timeline. Notice the direction these images take towards your future. Some people experience their future extending out to their right, some people have it right in front of them. Whatever way you do it, take note of where your future timeline extends. Together, your past and your future come together with you at the present. Your timeline might be like a V, with you at the base of the V and one side of the V going off into the past and the other side of the V going off into your future. Or yours might be like a straight or curved line passing right through you. The future in front of you, the past behind you. A few people even have curled timelines or time beads. Whatever way you organize time, you are now in possession of one of the most effective means of change ever discovered. You see, an attitude of any sort, positive or otherwise, persists through time. We might go through all kinds of different situations, experiences, or thought processes and still maintain the same attitude. Most people are more familiar with this when it's a bad attitude. But the process is also the same for a positive one. Somehow our brain has coded our current attitudes on our timeline, whether they're positive or negative. We want to make sure we code it for a positive attitude. That's the change we're going to learn how to make. This process uses two NLP techniques. The first is the NLP New Behavior Generator. Let's begin. Once again, you're going to literally see yourself to your right. See that other you over there, avoiding negative experiences. Actually doing something about those problems. And then see that other you truly attracted towards the things you want and doing something to get them. See those things in vivid, exciting, and compelling images. Realize you're literally creating your future life. Effectively, you're doing the first thing those rehabilitating athletes did. You're setting a motivation direction and establishing goals. Now we'll move to the second element those athletes used, and that's a value. In their case, the value was regaining full strength and health. Since we're going for a positive mental attitude, we're going to use gaining full capability and thriving. Or, gaining full capability and thriving plus. Think Anything less is unacceptable. See yourself over there filled with this value. It's almost like a magnet drawing that other you back on course. You'll know this value is there when you begin to see a relaxed determination in that body and a joyful sparkle in those eyes. And now the third element, the chunk size of information. Notice as that self you are watching practices seeing the big picture and then focuses on one aspect for its completion. See that other you experience satisfaction at completing each step on the way to the overall goal. Next, add in the fourth key element, time. 
Notice how that other you can easily stay in the present when concentrating on small chunks and tasks. And when that other you is working on something difficult or painful, that other you can move into the future and experience some of the ultimate rewards for the current sacrifice. Watch as these time management skills are spontaneously practiced by that you over there. Then there's the fifth key element, involvement. Watch as that other you takes charge of his or her own life and gets personally involved in solving problems and moving towards success. See how that you shows increasing feelings of determination and intensity with more participation. And finally, the sixth key element, self-to-self comparisons. Watch and listen as that self asks, How far have I progressed since last week? Since the first phase? Since I began this? See that other you encouraged by the improvement. You've now added all six elements into that self you are watching. Now let a mist come in so you don't see that you for a moment. While the mist is there, the wisdom of your unconscious mind can integrate these skills into your current thoughts in a way that most effectively produces a solid positive mental attitude. And the mist will clear as this process of integration is completed. See that other you in full possession of this new attitude in a way that pleases you. Enjoy it. Would you like to become that person? Having all those skills and attitudes? If so, there's one more step. Have that other self come toward you and on into you so those skills are inside you. Some people find if they actually put out their hands and draw that self into their chest, it enhances the results. Whatever way you've brought that other you inside, you've completed the process. You've now got these skills in your present. They will be there for you when you want and need them. Now, what if you'd had this attitude years ago? What if it was already familiar and dependable? How much more could you accomplish now? That's the idea behind the second NLP technique we'll do. It's Richard Bandler's Decision Destroyer, so-called because he developed it to help people destroy bad decisions they'd made earlier in life. We do this by putting a better decision in our memories before the bad one, thus neutralizing it. Here we're going to use it to put that potent new positive mental attitude in your past. You're going to feel like you've had this great attitude for a long time. To do this, you first need to think back to an empowering, positive memory. So empowering that it affects your behavior even today. It's an experience that convinced you of something. For example, that you were athletic, or likable, or good at something. Whatever this memory is, it formed an imprint. You just know it's true. You don't question it. This is the kind of experience you want to find. These often occur when you are young, like in your early teens, although they can happen any time in life. If you need to pause to think of such an experience, go ahead and do so. Now, with your positive imprint memory fully in mind, notice its submodalities, its size, its brightness, location, sounds, how real it is. You might find it's bigger, more dramatic, more colorful, even more real than ordinary memories. Notice the qualities that make it the important memory it is. Even list them. Now, think of your new positive attitude. Remember the moment you brought it into you. Give that positive attitude all the same qualities, the same submodalities as the positive imprint. Put your new attitude in the same place 
and think of it the same way as your positive imprint. This makes your positive attitude into an important imprint memory for you. Hold it in your mind that same way. Now you're ready. Keeping your positive attitude imprint with you, float up out of your body and above your timeline. Begin to fly back over your past. You may go back just a few years. You may want to go back to when you were quite young. You are looking for a time when you really could have used a positive mental attitude. A time that when it's changed will positively affect your life. When you found a specific past memory, sense strongly your positive attitude imprint. Now, slide into your past timeline just before that specific memory. Now move forward in time. See, hear, and feel as that past event is transformed by your positive mental attitude. Now, strongly sensing your positive attitude, rapidly begin to move through your memories towards the present. Experience how these events are changed and enriched by your positive attitude. Keep moving through your timeline rapidly all the way up to the present. Now, see yourself with your positive attitude imprint moving through your future expectations, transforming them as well. It's a great future filled with enriching experiences even better now because of your attitude. Take a deep breath and smile at what you've accomplished by learning more how to use your brain. Some people like to cycle through this several times to strengthen the benefits. I'll leave that up to you. You've just created an empowering positive mental attitude and imprinted it on your past memories and future expectations. You've recreated your life possibilities. You can use the same technique to bring other resources of success to everything you've done and everything you will do. We are the totality of our experiences. When we learn to change our memories, we change our lives. By putting a new attitude in our past, we give ourselves a new sense of our history, and new possibilities open up in our present. Old, mistaken beliefs can often fall away of their own accord, and a new sense of self emerges from deep within us, a self that is naturally optimistic, positive, and happy. The chance to live the life we've dreamed of has arrived. Every mountain has a peak. Mountains have always been special to people, almost mysterious. Archaeologists tell us that the earliest human beings didn't live near mountains, but rather lived on the flatlands along the coasts. Can you wonder what it was like for our ancestors to have made that first journey inland, to see mountains for the first time? Almost everyone can remember the first time they ever saw mountains, how they stood out from the plains, and the closer you got to them, the more they reached for the stars. Mountains, and more especially their jagged peaks, are symbols deep in the human psyche. Almost everyone on seeing a mountain peak thinks, however fleetingly, of climbing it. They imagine what the view must be like from the top. I began climbing mountains in college. I had traveled to Colorado to visit a friend, and while there, the lure of the mountains attracted me. I went to the nearest wilderness outfitter and purchased boots, a tent, and sleeping bag, and headed into the wilderness, alone. By the end of the first day, I was above the timber line. It was August, yet it snowed that night. For the next several days, I climbed around. I returned the next two summers to Colorado to climb those Rocky Mountains again. What I did is now called free rock climbing. While it's very pedestrian by modern standards, that never occurred to me. The elements and I were meeting in a clash of youthful energy versus an immovable object. And I was in awe that nature could be so dramatic, so challenging, and so inspiring. 
I've always been inspired by the perspective, seeing things from the peak. The world appears to open up. Its possibilities are more obvious. It's like you can see farther, not just into the distance, but into life. The unobstructed view encourages more sweeping thoughts and grander plans than lower blocked office views seem to allow. It's not surprising to me that entrepreneurs, certain CEOs, and children seek high open places. They still experience the world as full of possibilities. If you've ever climbed a mountain, you know it takes hours, even days, of grueling effort. But that's fascinating in its own way. On the way up, you go through every possible emotion. Frustration, fear, elation, self-doubt, trust, and triumph. It condenses into a few hours or days, experiences that might take place over weeks or months of ordinary life. There comes a point for me about halfway up the mountain, when I evaluate my state of mind and my feelings. How much am I in for? How much am I willing to commit emotionally and physically? How much of me is here for this? It's like being in the midst of life. You can look back into the past, back to your beginnings. And you can also look forward into your future, seeing an anticipated goal as real as a mountain peak. It would be years before I would hear mountain climbing connected with performance, peak performance. When I did, it was through Charles Garfield's original research on peak performers. Using a different method than NLP, he was also seeking to discover the structures of excellence. Like NLP, his work points to a commonality of thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors among peak performers. The ability to be at the top of the mountain, at our peak, is within every one of us, without exception. Yet many people feel they don't have the power to make changes. Dr. Michael Lerner directed a research project for the National Institute of Mental Health. He interviewed thousands of people from every aspect of American life, high-tech, blue-collar, service, professional, government, and self-employed. He asked them how much power they experienced in and over their lives. He published his findings in a 1986 book called Surplus Powerlessness, not surprising, he observed that we live in an economic and political system of unequal power. But he also made the startling discovery that in people's minds, the perception of this was far greater. People felt they had very little power, thus creating a surplus of powerlessness in themselves. Contrast this with Charles Garfield's findings in Peak Performers. The key thing he found among all peak performers was a total belief in the likelihood of their own success. They believed in themselves. They believed they could make a difference. One of NLP's goals is to show everyone that they can have that same belief. They can achieve whatever they want. All of us can make our lives much better. Right now, let's do a process that will give you the feelings and the resources of empowerment. The idea here is to have a particular problem trigger you to automatically become the kind of person who no longer has the problem. This NLP technique is called the swish pattern. Robert McDonald taught you how to use this technique for enhancing your self-esteem. It's a technique that's useful anytime you want to change a habit of mind. That's one of the reasons we're using it again. So you'll get more practice with it and use it on your own for whatever area of your life that needs more attention. So, to begin, think of a time when you felt powerless. Make sure it's a real and specific time, a time when you felt you just didn't have the ability to make things any better. Find a familiar memory. That way, when you change it, a lot of your experience will change. Now, put this memory aside for a moment. See an image of yourself the way you would look if you'd already overcome this problem. See that other you in your mind's eye empowered and resourceful. You don't know how you got it. It's a quality. You can just see you are empowered. In the eyes and in the smile, for example. Take all the time you need to let this image develop fully. Now, shrink that empowered self-image to a dot. See that dot in the center of the scene where you felt so powerless. 
Watch as that powerless scene moves away from you, gets smaller and darker and disappears. At the same time, see that self-image dot getting bigger and brighter and more colorful until it's life-size right in front of you. Enjoy that self-image. It will soon be you. Clear your mind. Now, for a moment, be in that powerless situation. Now see the self-image dot in the middle of it. And whoosh! That picture of powerlessness is faded away from you, and the empowered you is once again big and bright and in front of you. Clear your mind and do this five more times and make it faster each time. Each time the powerless scene fades away and it's automatically replaced by the empowered you. Do it now. Can you get back the powerless scene in the same powerless way? If you can, do the swish five more times, even faster. When you can't get the powerlessness back, you're done. Now it's automatic. Every time you feel that powerlessness, whoosh, your brain will change it. Your brain can do amazing things. If you want a positive peak performance life, your brain can be used to provide it. Let me give you another example. Years ago, NLP's co-developers Richard Bandler and John Grinder studied data on the so-called placebo effect. If you're not familiar with placebos, they are pills with no active ingredient in them. No medicine, no cure. For some people, if they think it's something that will help them, even if it contains nothing, somehow it really does help them. This is the placebo effect. Their brains are prepared for a positive change and goes ahead and makes their bodies feel better. In fact, placebos have proved to be effective about 20% of the time. 20% of the people studied say they felt better and actually had gotten better after taking a placebo. Now, medical science would have people think this is bad. At least they say you've got to rule out the placebo effect. But Bandler and Grinder looked at it differently. They saw it as a natural human ability the ability of the brain to heal, to recover, to exceed expectations under certain conditions. What if this ability could be called forth when we wanted it or needed it? What if our brains can literally make us feel better? In this next exercise, you're going to use Richard Bandler's Decision Destroyer again. Last time, you used it to give yourself a positive mental attitude throughout your experience. This time, we'll use it to put a placebo of peak performance in your past memories. Think now and find a positively exceptional time in your life. It may be a time when you had great creativity or insight or concentration, and it all led up to some remarkable success. A time when you were on an exceptional performance. Whatever it is, Think of a specific, real situation. Now, step into it and re-experience more of it than you ever have. Lean into it. Let go. Be there. See what you saw and hear what you heard. Have those feelings again. Next, imagine you are making a movie of this exceptional performance. Notice its cinematic qualities, its location, its size, its brightness, its richness and detail. What kind of sound does it have? Make a quick inventory. You know that this is the brain's special way of coding this experience, this time in your life when you perform so well. Now we're going to supercharge it by adding in the positive attitude imprint. When you created that new imprint, you gave it the qualities of a life experience that was bigger, bolder, more real, and more important than the rest. Add those same qualities into your exceptional performance. What you're doing is combining exceptional performance with your positive attitude. 
This combination can be used for some amazing things. Strongly holding this combination of your exceptional performance and your positive attitude imprint float out of your body and go back above your timeline into the past. Where would this combination of peak performance and attitude have made a tremendous difference in your life? drop into your timeline just before you need these. Quickly go through that experience where you want these qualities and go forward through all the other experiences up to the present, noticing how these resources transform your experience. Now see yourself with those resources going through your future experiences. The process is complete. With the Decision Destroyer, you can literally reprogram your past and your future in minutes. Use it anytime you want to add an attitude, a feeling, or a state of excellence to your whole life. That way you can live more of your life with peak performance. Yet what is peak performance? Many people think the peak is where it's at, that it's the only worthwhile place to be and all the rest is drudge work leading up to it. People with this idea also think that to be happy they need the perfect house and the right car, the totally satisfying relationship, and the completely fulfilling career. And when they get all this, then they'll be at the peak and be truly happy. Truly and deeply happy. Until the copy machine breaks down, the computer crashes, daycare calls, they have an argument with their spouse, whatever it is. So, maybe they get 20 minutes of pure happiness, and then they have to spend all their time again working and arranging things the way they think they should be. Once again, climbing that mountain of drudge work. Also, that sometime in the next three to five years, they get to be truly happy for another 20 minutes. Maybe there's another alternative. And that is to be happy no matter what happens in the external world. That it doesn't matter what other people do to you, what you have or don't have. You can decide you're going to be happy no matter what. You can use your brain to bring that idea to life. NLP empowers you to do that now. You can be a happy person whatever the situation. And then, if you get the perfect house, you get to be even happier. And if you have a satisfying relationship, you get to be happier still. Then you're constantly adding fulfillment to your life instead of struggling just to be happy for a few fleeting moments of time. With NLP, you can manage your experiences. You can change them in positive and meaningful ways. This doesn't mean you won't have bad days. It just means the day is bad, not you. It means you're creating your own environment, an environment of happiness and success. During the production of this program, I moved my home from Boulder, Colorado to Chicago, Illinois. When I arrived in Chicago, my new residence wasn't ready. My possessions stacked in boxes around me. Was I happy with this? No, not really. But was I still a happy person? Yes, I was. I wasn't about to let a difficult situation affect my outlook on life. I could have let the situation get in the way of my performance, but instead I used my brain to create the state of mind I needed to accomplish this goal. That's what peak performers do. They create their environments, internal and external, so they can accomplish their goals. Peak performance is an active process. When you have raised your overall performance, it becomes your new baseline. If you've done all the NLP techniques up to this point, you have programmed your future, developed better relationships with yourself and others, cleared up past difficulties, created a positive attitude, and learned to use several NLP techniques. Remember the self-to-self -self comparisons great athletes use? Appreciate how far you've come from the beginning of your listening. At a recent seminar, Richard Bandler asked how many of the group had any idea where they would be in five years. Only four people raised their hands. The rest had no idea. The great thing for you is that you're in the group that does know where they're going. Reward yourself in ways so that all of you feels appreciated. You have made yourself the agent of your own destiny. 
your life is headed in a beautiful direction. Now that you're up to speed, let's go another step further. Let's move into what a University of Chicago psychologist calls the experience of flow. When everything becomes effortless and time extends, when you're at your peak level of expression, it's what sports figures call being in the zone, when the ball looks huge and slow as it comes toward you, and you feel you can run all day without tiring. What Arnold Palmer compares to the feeling of a musician in the middle of a great performance. What jazz musicians call being in the groove. The fact that so many different people in so many different fields describe this experience attests to its existence. I had my first taste of this feeling, this feeling of peak performance, when I was a college student writing fiction. The words seemed to flow directly into the typewriter. Every word was perfect, and I knew it. It was an incredible feeling. Keith Jarrett, the great pianist, knowingly enters these states whenever he performs a concert. This state is so important to him he won't play unless he experiences it. We at NLP Comprehensive have been exploring this state. We found it usually comes when people focus all their attention on something. In our usual states of consciousness, we either hold back some of our attention or we're simply distracted by the things around us. In NLP, we found something else about peak performance or being in flow. It's difficult to put into words, but what we find is that people in this state have a freedom from concern, a freedom to do anything. That doesn't mean that there aren't concerns in their lives. It simply means that these concerns don't hold them back or stop them from being happy and doing what they want. Take commodity or futures traders. These people deal in a very high stakes atmosphere. Enormous amounts of money can be gained or lost in minutes. These traders are obviously concerned about making money and not losing a fortune. Yet when I studied the best of them, I found that these people could let go of this pressure. As one put it, it's a game and the money is how I keep score. Thinking of it as a game, he's able to act in a state of total concentration and energy. It's as though they developed a liberating perspective on life. Yes, the stakes are high, the money enormous, but they could free their minds from this and let their creativity and talent go where it's needed. And because of this attitude, they had great success. They too were in flow, in the zone, the groove, that area of peak performance from where all great achievers act. The following process is designed to give you much of that same perspective. As with the other NLP processes, it's important you give it your full attention. You have already learned about being an observer or being in third position and about being in another person's shoes or second position. Now, go ahead and step into yourself, fully into first position. Notice your body, the parts touching your seat. Notice where that awareness that is you normally resides. Is it in your head? in your belly, in your fingertips. Experiment by letting that awareness move around to unusual locations and notice any changes. Slowly begin to sense your awareness beginning to move up and out of your body. Soon you're floating easily above yourself. You can see yourself and the room below. Now let yourself float even higher until your head grazes the ceiling. Then pop up to the next floor or through the roof until you have a view of the building from the air and the surrounding area. Next, let your motion accelerate as you see the entire city and then rivers and natural landmarks that divide the states. and continue out further and you can begin to make out the shape of the continental United States. And soon you begin to see some cloud cover and then both oceans. And now see that whole glorious earth as it appears to float in the darkness of space. See the diamond bright stars that surround it. Watch its surface as clouds move above it. 
This is your home. Take in this view. Frank White calls it the overview effect. That's because, looking at our world in this way, we can see that it's without borders, that it is one world. When you are older and retired, you may actually see this view from a space station window. You'll remember this time, how this perspective has helped you keep things in proportion through the years. And now, begin to descend, moving closer to the Earth. Soon you can see the shape of the continents, then your state, and eventually your city and your neighborhood. Finally, you approach your building, move down through the roof, and then come to rest just above yourself. Blinking your eyes a couple of times, you'll begin to see the timeline for that you seated below. Notice which direction the past goes out to, and notice from which direction the future comes in. If you want, you can start to travel above your future timeline, even up to one of the goals you put on your timeline when Kelly Gerling was leading you. Now you can see how you attained that goal and how it's improved your future. See the sense of achievement and satisfaction and other emotions and experiences that connect all of this. Then look further into the future and see how this makes other accomplishments possible. Look at all those new opportunities for a better life. You can dip into that future and touch it. And by doing so, some of those great future feelings will come into you. You can hold on to these feelings to remind you of your desire and direction. You'll know just how good fulfillment can be. And with this new sense of optimism, you can begin to move further into your future above your timeline. And you can extend that future out past a hundred years of health. You'll see a productive and fulfilling life until the end of your timeline. And you stop just before the end. I'm not sure what you'll see at the end of that line. Some religions say it's a door. Others talk of a wall of fire. Still others, a shimmering, ineffable presence or light. However you represent it, let your attention cast back across your timeline and review the experiences of your life. Few people have this chance, the chance to find out before the end if the life they've unconsciously planned to live will be satisfying and worthwhile. And now, consider with your heart as well as your head whether this is the life you want to live. Will you feel good having lived that life? And if you feel you need or want to make changes in your timeline, in your life, let your unconscious mind help you. A mist or fog can roll across that future history. And if you see lightning flashes or different colors glowing off of your misted timeline, you can sense that changes are being made. And these are combining your conscious wishes or desires with the wisdom of your unconscious mind. You'll be surprised how soon this process completes itself. And you'll be delighted as your new timeline, your new life, is revealed to you. It's said that after the age of 30, the lines on our faces begin to trace the path of our lives. Look below you and see the old, wise person you are going to become. Look deeply into that wise face and see the richness of experience you have planned for yourself. Stop your thinking and tinkering and listen as that oldest and wisest form of you may want to deliver some special message or sign to you. Be most respectful of the answer.
From this vantage point, begin to travel back above your timeline toward the present. If you wish, you can review your new future as you do, taking in an experience of more new choices all the way back to the present. And once you're there, take a moment to look into your past. See a younger you who at one time anticipated your existence. And look into the future and see a future you that you are looking forward to becoming. That future you is looking to you to make it real. Now re-enter yourself in the present. Bring with you all those new learnings. Breathe deeply. Feel your fingertips and your seat. Open your eyes. The process is now complete. One of the things I admire about NLP co-developer John Grinder is that each year he puts aside time to learn what he calls a new game. One year it was flying acrobatic aircraft. Another year it was stalking and tracking animals in the wild. And one year it was technical rock climbing. Typical of him, he sought the best instructor he could find. Someone who was a high achiever in his field, a model of excellence. This world-class climber gave classes and lessons to a small number of students along with John. For several weeks, they studied the technical and safety aspects of the sport along with regular climbs. As the class came to an end, the world-class climber informed his students that there was an advanced class, but that to get into the class, they would have to do one last climb in which their performance would be judged. On the day set for the climb, the students arrived at the appointed place. They were met by people who said the instructor was delayed and that they should just begin the climb without him. It was a long and difficult route. It included everything they had learned during the class. After several hours of exhausting climbing, each student reached what appeared to be the top of the rock face. As they pulled themselves over, they found it wasn't the peak, but the first of several more mountain ranges rising out of each other up to the stars. Hidden from them, their instructor was watching. Depending upon the look on their faces, the world-class climber would accept them as an advanced student. He did this because he wanted to climb with people who were attracted to higher and higher peaks, in the world and in themselves. Practice the many skills and techniques given, and you'll discover more and more ways to enhance your life. Ways that take you to more exciting opportunities and higher achievements with each passing year. Enjoy your learning and your journey. We at NLP Comprehensive wish you great success and encourage you to use your inner power to change to make all your dreams come true. This concludes NLP, the new technology of achievement. This program, upon repeated listening, will continue to offer you powerful tools for change. NLP is experiential. Its true value comes through direct personal concentration on its techniques. Continue to use the NLP skills you've learned, and they'll prove invaluable to both your personal and professional development. Now that you understand your experience and know what's possible, there's no end to the fulfilling experiences you can create. Hi, this is Dan Strutzel. At this moment, you're probably feeling excited, inspired, motivated, empowered, and most importantly, ready to apply the information you've just heard. We at Nightingale Conant want you to keep that feeling going today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life, and use it to create the life of your dreams. But we know that's not always easy to do. I'm going to share with you a simple yet extremely effective secret that will help you to maintain the motivation you're feeling right now and really achieve the goals that first inspired you to listen to this program. It's called the Online Mission Statement Builder. 
In just five short minutes, this free, easy to use online service will give you a detailed, clearly defined, printed statement of your life's mission that will give you the power to truly accomplish any goal, spiritual, personal, or financial. Your mission statement will be like a guiding light, keeping you focused on what's important, the person you're becoming, the life you dream of, and the goals you plan on achieving, so your life unfolds exactly the way you want it to. Use this free service now, and you'll immediately propel yourself toward the achievement of your goals and dreams. I know, because thousands of people have already taken this opportunity and experienced rapid and dramatic life transformations as a result. This is your invitation to be next. If you're committed to having more, doing better, and living life to the absolute fullest, and you'd like to achieve those goals in record time, simply visit our website at www.nightingale.com forward slash mission statement to begin the process. That's www.nightingale.com forward slash mission statement. Remember, there is no cost for this powerful service and no obligation, but I do urge you to visit www.nightingale.com forward slash mission statement now. If you hesitate, the momentum you feel now may fade away over the days and weeks to come. That's what happens to most people. They let their hopes and dreams pass them by. Please don't let that be you. Take action now and you'll change your personal, professional, and financial future immediately and forever. Go to www.nightingale.com forward slash.